Hi, everybody. It's episode 484 of PodQuest. Hey. hey. It is Wednesday, November... Tw- or no, it's, sorry. It's Tuesday, November 21st, 2023. I fucking wrote it on the thing and still didn't. Uh, <laughs> um, that, that's what I get for not actually reading. Um, but see, see, you, you wrote it on the thing, but you slashed out Wednesday, which, like, doesn't completely delete Wednesday. You can still read the Wednesday in the slash. So, like, you probably were reading... Wednesday. No, I wasn't. I wasn't looking at it at all. That's the problem. Man, man. Um, yeah, that's my fault. I did it wrong. Anyway, I'm Chris. With me is Druton. Hello. And Walnut. Yeah, I'm here. It's another week, guys. It's raining and miserable, but it's earlier yeah. than usual because Richie's job got hacked. <laughs> yep. I, de- I technically, I'm not even supposed to have had said that we got hacked. Um, so I'm not cutting it. I, I know. <laughs> I don't think anybody knows where I work. I've never actually. As far as I can remember, have ever actually mentioned where I work? And no, I, of, I don't even know where you work. All of our listener that would hear this is definitely not going to use this for any sort of insider trading or anything like that, which I doubt would be. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck is going on. I just got a text from my boss saying, no work yet, so we'll be in the same loop tomorrow, which is great, because then, like, the three hours I just recorded while on the clock today, I'll be able to edit tomorrow. <laughs> so, sure. Uh, I'm 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 happy to have a bonus two days off on a holiday week. Well, hopefully those YouTube ad dollars makes up for them not paying you. <laughs> I I don't I don't I'm not a partner on YouTube. It's so hard to become partner. Well, not hard, but it takes a long time to become partner on YouTube. Yeah, but can't don't you still get ad revenue just from no. monetizing your videos? No, you need to be partner to monetize. I need 500 subscribers and I need 40 80 hours of view time or something like that. Uh, uh, in a month or something, I don't really remember. But I need 500 subscribers in order to be able to be monetized. Is that like a thing they changed? Because That's... the OneQuest channel is monetized. There's no way the OneQuest channel is monetized. Unless it, we got grandfathered into something, but it still doesn't make sense. That's what I mean. Like, is that a thing that changed? Because I know for a fact that it was monetized. It might, must have been. Yeah, like, yeah. I set it up. Like, like I, I've actually gone in there and like told it where to put ads when like we actually had videos to put up i yeah i don't know i've never i've never had like ad information i am not i'm not partnered so i can't i don't get money from youtube i don't know how youtube works so i'm i'm, I'm it's, looking it's the it's the same as twitch you have to reach a certain threshold to start making ad revenue no no i mean like i legitimately don't know how youtube works i don't know where to go to look at like stuff like how do I how do I look at oh YouTube Studio? Yeah, it it, it, it wasn't always there. Well, I di- I didn't realize that's what you meant. Yeah, if you wanted to look at like analytics and stuff, yeah, it's YouTube Studio. Yeah, so we we just got dropped out of it then because we used to be able to monetize and now we're now we can't. That'd be yeah, I I I I'm shocked that we would have been able to be monetized even then. I mean, what we did, we never made anything off of it. What was our follower count? Our subscriber count? What is we have seventy five? Sub- yeah, that, I. That's, I think they upped it from, like, 100 to 500 when they last upped it. So, so I mean, th- this YouTube got created in, like, 2012. Yeah. At the time, there was no cap for monetization. You could just put ads on videos. True. Because we got a couple, like, hey, your video has been demonetized emails because they were, like, trailers that were provided by companies. Fun. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, we legitimately, like... We've never really put anything into the YouTube, so there's not really, you know, it's it's not like it, we were making anything off of it. But yeah, 75 subscribers. We've had 47 public hours watched this year. This year? Yeah, 47 wow. public watched hours. What? <laughs> Dude, we, ha- we have the trailer. So I don't know, in like 2013, um, for some reason, I needed a, a copy of the original Ninja Turtles um, animated intro. Um, and I found one and I added it to YouTube and then linked it in like a, an article or something. Hmm. And that video gets a ton of views. It also occasionally gets comments. Okay. Because like, you know, people want to find the fucking Ninja Turtles theme sometimes. Yeah. Wild. I mean, look, the, the last like legit video we uploaded was the, um, the PAX Unplugged one. Yeah. From 2021. The, the Jurassic World video. Yeah. So, you know, we don't put a lot up there. I thought about trying to um, use, like, DaVinci or something like that that's free to just um, put up, like, an audio version of the podcast. 
If you want to do that, we can do that. You just need to send me the final uh, audio, and I can I can cut that easily more every Thursday. Oh yeah, I mean it's it, even for me like it wouldn't be hard. I literally just have to like I have DaVinci installed on my laptop. I literally just have to import the audio and the cover image and export it. Yeah, like video editing's not all like that sort of video stuff's not not hard i like no the stuff that you do for like seven days to die and stuff is a little more complicated just because you have to actually like it's not even hard it's just tedious because you have to watch like if you have an hour of content it's like two hours of editing because you're like watching and re-watching to like figure out where to cut things i mean that's that's the lucky thing at least with some of the like when it comes to seven days to die it's a little bit more tedious because i do like I'll, i'll It'll be between talk breaks, but then between, like, whenever I'm talking is basically what I'm cutting for. But then, depending on, like, what I'm doing in game, I might not be talking, but something might happen to where I do have to actually, like, watch. But when it comes to something like The Long Dark, where I was just saying, like, I've recorded two hours worth, it's literally pretty much every time I talk. That's all I'm having on there. Um, there's so, not, uh, do you just go through and just watch the, um, the audio track and see where you're talking and then I, I, I watch the audio track and see where I'm talking. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll like skim through where there's no audio. And then once I get to audio, I'll listen to it a little bit faster just to make sure it makes sense and, and it matters. Um, and then, yeah, anytime there's no talks so or anytime there's a talk break, like anytime there's a break from talking, I will I like I tend to remember what was going on when I was recording to be like all right well this is just me traveling to here this is just me traveling there or like I'll pause it and go to the next talk break to see how much time has passed also to figure out what kind of cut I would be putting like if it's for instance if it's a longer time frame between edits or if it's like kind of in a way making a new chapter it'll be a different scene transition than it would be if it's just like me just moving time forward so you guys don't have to watch me walking i have so two... not just all star wipes no not no <laughs> no it's it's um transition do you at to least black. do star wipes i hope you do star wipes no i no Man. i do i i transition to and from black so it'll be like if that's like the main break between quote scenes essentially is the way i'm calling it if it's like between scenes or between chapters of the episode it'll be a fade to black fade to and from black so it'll go to black and then come back um and then if it's just cutting for for the long dark at least if it's just cutting between just portions depending on how rapid the cut is um if it's just a very rapid cut where I'm just literally still staring at the same spot as I'm cutting, it's a hard cut. But it, 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 because it's just me making sure that what I'm saying just continues to say what I'm saying when I'm trying to think of what I'm saying, like when there's actual talk break. But if it's like, all right, there's a longer pause, then it'll be um, uh, like a, a phase, a fade between the two scenes. Um or or um, a blur effect. No Star Wars. I don't do anything. Like, I don't want to do anything. But they're so much fun. No. You want to increase your viewers. Star wipes. No. Star wipes and like like the the interlacing lines. Like See, where the, like yeah. The thing about those, they're not at the top of Da Vinci. So I'm not. I don't want to keep scrolling down to get to them. Well, stop being lazy. Pin them. No, I, it's the, the ones I like are up top. And that's what I'm using. Do you I, at I, least ha- do you do you at least have fun like um like like lower thirds? Uh, like annotations and stuff. No, like lower thirds. What do you mean by lower thirds? Th- that's what they're called, right? I don't know. You're a video guy now. <laughs> what, do you mean, what do you mean by lower third? Like what? Do, what are you trying? You don't even know what you're trying to say is. No, so like you know, like when you're watching like a video and like on the bottom of the screen, it'll like have like a little animation where it like shows like a person's name and their handle, and it like flips and then like slides off to the side oh annotations like i just said that's what i call them at least they're um, called, they're, called they're fucking lower thirds dog yeah, that's, that's so no, I, I, no I one in know. video calls that an annotation that's fucking yeah for but your book reports <laughs> that, but that's the thing i don't know what they're called i've never known they were called lower thirds assholes that's Isn't, why i said an annotation aren't anno- question right? at, aren't annotations the things in youtube that like um when you put like the links on the screen like, at the end of a video, like, click here to subscribe, click here to see this other no. video that's similar to this one. No. 
I don't Isn't know. that what they used to be called? I don't know. I don't know what things are called. I just do things. I occasionally have, like, little title subtitles that, like, will mock me for something I'd said or did, but not not too, too often. Like, if I'm saying something that's completely wrong, I'll correct it, like, in there, or, like, uh, Seven Days to Die, if uh, I just started, I'm starting a new series this week on Seven Days to Die, because I died last week, um... And so, uh, when I post, when I talk about what the seed, the map seed is, I post the, the, the map seed on there, or there have been times where I'll be like, oh, well, maybe we'll do this or that, and I'll just, I'll be like, just remember what I, remember when I said this, or like, keep this in mind, or no, you won't, idiot, or something like that, occasionally, because like, I'll have a plan, and then it'll all go to shit. So like, I'll like, I'll mock myself sometimes, but I don't do that, do it that often, because it's just, it's not, uh, uh, imitation is the, uh, highest form of flattery, and a lot of my videos are based off of other videos of other creators I've seen, and how, like, I like how they, how their styles are, so that's how my style has, has become, and, and I'm turning it into my own as well, but I'm still, like, working off of how I liked their style, so, like, I tend to, I tend to, like, not really think of doing those things. Uh, Glock9 to 1 million subscribers. I'm getting famous like Mr. Beast was by trying to get somebody else famous. <laughs> um, so I was just looking at the videos we have. So the Ninja Turtles 1980s theme, 41,866 views. Jesus. Hell yeah. Over 11 years. Whatever. Um, and then in 2013, October 2013, we uploaded um, Marvel's Ultimate Spider-Man Season 2, Episode 21, second chances um i don't know if this is a theme or a clip we used to get these things sent to us that has seven thousand views and then we have basically the same thing but for um avengers assemble from 2013 and that's got two thousand views um and then our next highest one is actually jurassic world um that one has 803 views so apparently that one actually didn't do terrible considering it got uploaded and then never mentioned again mm -hmm. but also like it's got the word jurassic like world in there and i'm sure like the tags included like jurassic park and stuff so like prob that probably helped um but yeah anyway rich what's on the agenda uh real quick uh our one quest it's one dash quest video or one space quest video? neither just what, uh, one quest video oh, i say this every week one is it <laughs> one quest is a dash between it correct no not no you not in youtube it's just one okay. quest video Okay, that's why, because I'm searching one quest video on YouTube, um, and I, our SEO is terrible because it doesn't even come up. Uh, there's one quest, one video. He has 33 subscribers. There's a live stream uh, from 2017. Huh? I don't know. Just came up. Apparently, we we live streamed in 2017. I, I don't know. I have one. Oh no! I guess it was something that was created by mistake because it says upcoming. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, that's just that's how live stream has always been set up with with YouTube. Like it was showing me always having something coming up. Anyway, uh yeah, I, apparently I can't find our YouTube. That's fine. Um, it's YouTube uh, got youtube.com slash one quest video. I was searching through YouTube. Okay. Relax. Just go to the uh, website. Um Who uses YouTube in a web browser? I mean, I'm sure if I search on my phone, it's still the same. Uh, but I use YouTube on, uh, Drew went to a concert. We all read World War Z. Uh, Cobb, you started Persona 5 Tactica. And I watched, uh, the first two episodes of the new Godzilla series, as well as all of Scott Pilgrim, uh, takes off. That was the agenda. Yeah. I was just letting people know since, since we'd segued about how to find the, uh, the YouTube channel. Look, it just, it, we, we, we just go how close. Just go how close. It should, huh. Did it just show up for me or did I search it weird? Yeah, it, it, so if you search just one quest video, all one word, it does show up. The video is also one word? Yeah, so it, it's one quest video, all one word. Oh, I was doing one quest space video. Can you put spaces in your name? When you search, yes, yeah, you should be able to put a space in your name. So, I mean, one quest and video is the, name. it's the display name and it's the, the actual URL name. The yeah, display you name can, you can put space. You can put, put the, spaces like, in now. Yeah. Well, you know, maybe somebody should have done that. Maybe somebody should have. I don't. I I'll don't blame YouTube. Eric. YouTube is confusing. It's not though. I just don't like YouTube all that much. The I like the interface for YouTube is absolute garbage. Is more what I mean. The algorithm is great on YouTube. The, the algorithm, like I've grown faster 
uh, in this year and a half of making videos than I have in the time I've been growing on Twitch in the two, two, three years that I've been. Are like, you being I, serious or are you being sarcastic? I, I don't know. I'm being serious. Like, okay. Like, I, my growth is natural growth on YouTube. Like, I don't have a lot of channels that I'm sharing my videos on. I don't have a lot of, like, hey, follow for follow type of discords or anything whenever I post a new video. Like, I, my growth is just from people coming to find my YouTube. And, uh, I literally, uh, I was talking with Evan the other day and, like, he's getting a lot of, cause he'll watch all of my posts and he's getting a lot of, suggested videos of other smaller creators and i i even got a comment the other day um which i'll read it uh out um i'll read out what it says word for word uh, i just gotta find it where's youtube studio there it is um but it, it's basically like um i've never watched hold on where, where is it here we go the comment is and i was posted 11 days ago on my uh Episode 37 of The Long Dark. I've never watched The Long Dark before, never played it, never watched your channel before, but YouTube decides to recommend episode 37 of this series to me with only nine views. What the F, YouTube? Well, I'm here. I guess I'll sub. <laughs> so I was like, thank you for the sub. I appreciate it. Hope you like the show. Yeah, uh, I mean, hey. See, yeah. The algorithm for me, because I don't watch a ton of YouTube, is just a fucking mess. Like, if I happen to look something up and click on a YouTube video, suddenly that becomes what my fucking feed is. I mean, because that's because you don't, since you don't use it a lot, it it's showing you what you looked for and what you watched. I just wish it wasn't so aggressive, I guess is the best way to put it. I mean, it's... Like, rather than taking a single thing you watch and making your entire feed that, like, make it like something that you watch like three or four, like, similar things of. But like you said, yeah. you don't, you, like you said, you don't go on YouTube a lot. But, like, I go on it enough that I should have at least some sort of, like, recognizable trend. And instead, like, looking at it right now, like, there's a bunch of just random fucking, like, news bullshit on here and things from, like, talk shows. Do you watch talk show stuff? No. Like, every once in a while I'll click on something because it, it has somebody that I think is funny in it. And because I don't use YouTube for a lot else, that is what gets filled in my fucking thing. There you go. And, like, I don't like that. Well, you gotta start... They should have an incognito option that still lets me use my YouTube premium. It's called incognito mode on your fucking... No, uh, it's not, because then you're not signed in and I have to watch fucking ads. You don't have YouTube Red, do you? Oh, wait, you do, don't you? I thought you didn't have YouTube Red. No, I... No, nobody has YouTube Red. (laughs) You know what I mean. YouTube Premium. It used to be YouTube Red. Come on now. You know what I mean. No, I do, because when I do watch it, I'm not going to sit through a fucking ad. I hate ads. Ads make the world go round. But Everything's getting ads again. You know that, if, right? If they Everything. weren't so bad, I wouldn't mind. Like, I don't mind the baked-in ones most of the time, like the ones that, like, act- the actual creators do. But, like, the mm-hmm. pre-roll and mid-roll and stuff like that, like, they're placed poorly, and they're always the same fucking thing. And I don't have time for that. I'm not watching a five-minute video to get a three-minute fucking ad. Uh, uh, trust me, I know... I, I, My biggest complaint about ads is the, when the actor strike started with um uh, uh this year uh what was it uh fake doctors real friends they had they released a f- an audio file they released I, I you can't even call it an episode it was maybe a minute long of their um uh of one of their producers saying hey because of the strike we can't actually talk about the show so we're trying to figure out what we're going to do um, so we're not releasing any new episodes, or we're not going to release an old episode, because we're not supposed to share this. Uh, but, just keep a lookout, we're, we're planning things. Maybe a minute long. If you go on, let's say, on to Google Podcast, and find that episode. It's got, it like, a two-minute ad? Five minutes long. Yeah. Because there is about four ads, and there are, like, three 30-second ads beforehand, maybe four. It's, like, two minutes of ads before and after. And it's just like, I, you literally sit through three minutes of ads for them to say, hey, we'll be back next week with something different. That, that pisses me off, but. Yep. I, I've completely stopped listening to shows that do the like insert ads. Mm-hmm. Um, because a lot of these companies now are, they're using like an algorithm to insert the ad into the show. Yeah. And it's, it doesn't work. Like it fucking, it'll cut people off mid sentence and insert a three-minute ad, and then you just come right back into where that person left off talking. It's fucking terrible. Mm-hmm. So I've, I've unsubscribed to just a bunch of shows that started doing that. Um, 
So, like, I have a lot less podcasts that I actually listen to. Nice. I mean, kind but, of. But let's move on. Instead of complaining about ads. No. Which ads are Ad- starting to be... Ads are, ads are terrible. The corp- are, the, our corporate overlords are the worst. Ads are starting to become the future again. Um... Drew, you went to a concert. What, what concert yeah. did you go to? I did. I saw uh, Ben Quad, Spanish Love Songs, Heart Attack Man, and Hot Mulligan. Oh, that was, was almost a good concert. It was a fucking dope concert. Right up till the end. Oh, Hot Mulligan's so fucking good. I don't like him. We've been over that. <laughs> well, I know. You're wrong, but... I almost got tickets just to see um, Spanish Love Songs, but it was sold out. Oh, it sold out in yeah. a day. It was the first show on that tour to sell out. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, by, like, months. It took forever for another show to sell out. Philly sold out within a couple days. Spanish Love Songs, incredibly popular in Philly. Oh, well, I mean, you know, good for them. I mean, like, earlier this year, they played at um, Kung Fu Necktie, which is incredibly small. Yeah, that's wild. Compared <laughs> to the Fillmore. Uh, literally, the, the show at Kung Fu Necktie sold out so fast, I had e ticks or whatever Kung Fu Necktie uses up with the countdown timer waiting for the tickets to go on sale at 10 a.m. It refreshed at 10 a.m. It was sold out. Nice. Oh, so Dogs barking. <laughs> so yeah, uh, but I mean, you would also hate Ben Quad, uh, probably Cobb, because they're like that weird mathy rock Midwest emo. Oh. Yeah. Um, Who knows? Like, you know, I, I, I'm not going to say that I don't like any of those bands. It's just, I like, Hot Mulligan just never clicked for me. Have you listened to the new album? No, because I didn't like the stuff that I've heard before. <laughs> and, like, to be fair, like, I don't, th- th- their recorded stuff isn't as bad. I don't like the way they sound live. Like, they have good energy. Like, they put on, like, a good show. I just don't like their live sound. I don't think they sound as good. Eh, to each their own. Yeah, that's why I said, like, I don't, like, I don't like them. I don't think they're the worst fucking band ever. I'm, I'm going to say that because that's what I do. But, like, you know, you like them, you like them. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, but they legitimately got me to cry at this show. Fucking good. Good. You deserve it. Well, th- their song Betty is about the singer's cat fucking dying. <laughs> fucking easily their saddest song. Uh, like, they played their entire new album, not in a row, but they played every song off that album with some older stuff, like, mixed in. Uh, but yeah, they played Betty, and I was like, yep, nope, I'm done. Uh, Spanish Love Songs was amazing. I wish they played more than seven songs, though. That's always the uh, worst part about, like, openers. Like, so few openers get more than five to eight songs. Yeah. Uh, Heart, uh, Heart Attack Man was alright. I wish Spanish Love Songs and Heart Attack Man had been switched in the order, but... Uh, was Spanish Love Songs, like, the earlier band? They were... They went on second. Ben Quad went on first, then Spanish Love Song. Then Heart Attack Man got, like, 11 songs, and Hot Mulligan played, like, 16 or whatever. I want to say 16 or 18, something like that. Nice. Did Did I tell you what happened when we went to see um, State Champs and a bunch of other bands? No. Maybe? So, doors were set to open at 6, show was set to start at 7. Okay. Super normal, right? Uh-huh. Um, so the, the, the lineup, it was supposed to be Lolo, State Champs, um, or Lolo, the Somerset, State Champs, and Boys Like Girls. Okay. Um, apparently there was a fifth band on, on that list that was not originally, like, on, like, the, the release info, um, that they played sometime between 6 and 6.15. Oh, jeez. Um, Lolo ended up starting at, like, I don't know, 6.45, because her set was basically done when we got there at 7.01. Oh wow. Um and then like um the summer set went on by like 7:20. I'm like, "Damn guys, like I understand you you overbooked for like the time that was listed, but you probably should have updated the thing and maybe done doors at 5, show at 6." Right. Where because was of, it? The Fillmore. Yeah. Yeah, it's like cuz that means like that opening band which was Sense or Senses um had I don't know, seven people probably in there by the time they started. That's lame. Yeah. Um yeah, it was it was weird. Also just speaking of um of bands that played like oddly small venues, since you mentioned that with uh, Spanish love songs, I saw uh the starting line is playing um Underground Arts. Okay. And like over the last 6 months they played the main stage at Adjacent and the Skyline stage at The Man. Yeah. <laughs> and now they're playing Underground Arts, a place that fits 200 people. Uh, it's a little more than that, but... I can't be that much more, because they have all those fucking pillars in the way. 
there was more than 200 people at the Cat Bite, at the Bad Time Records tour of the show. Oh, that's how many, like, if you had to guess, how many people do you think fit in there? I mean, maybe closer to 500. All right, let's see what Google says. I'm going to say five. Oh, 650 capacity. That is insane. That place okay. does not look like it fits that many. I mean, I, have you been in there or just? No, yeah, I was there in okay. October. To, I went to see uh, First and Forever. Right. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, like deceptively wide, I feel. I guess that's true. It does kind of, and like, it, not that it wraps around, but it kind of like, I don't know. It, it almost has like alcoves on the side. Yeah. Yeah, 650 just seems very large. Yeah. Richie's over here like, I don't know what Underground Arts is. <laughs> no, I know what Underground Arts is, but... It's like the second smallest venue in Philly. I, I still don't know what bands Drew went and saw, because it all just sounded like gibberish when he was saying the names again. You need to listen to more music, man. You should listen to Heart Attack, man, Richie. Like, I legitimately think you would like them. Is that the one that you said on my uh, Discord? Mm-hmm. I'll have to give them a shot at some point. I, I but, um... Like, I, I would say start with their song Leap Year. That's the most Sum 41 sounding mm-hmm. song. Uh, but, like, like they were good. I just didn't like them as much as Spanish Love Song. But, like, I legitimately think you would like them. They're, they're your vibe. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. I, uh, because I didn't work today, I have, like, three days of podcasts I have to listen to. Or two days, two days of podcasts plus whatever YouTube videos I've gotten. So, I don't know when I'll be listening to music over the next couple of weeks. Unless maybe going to... Packs that'll probably be listening to podcasts. Listen to more music. Just fuck the podcasts. Um, I mean, I don't know. Kind of, kind of feeling that with some of my podcasts. Like I said, primarily Fake Doctors, Real Friends. I'm kind of over it. Come, or, and then come see Knuckle Puck and Real Friends on December eighth or ninth. Ninth. Mm, see, I, uh, I am going to be spending any spare cash I have at Pack. So there, it's. With with Christmas and everything, there's no no chance of coming to see any bands or re- pretty much do anything outside of Pax. Well, that's lame. Pa- Pax falls, in my opinion, Pax falls at the worst time. It's fucking cold and it's Christmas time. <laughs> like, well, yeah, I mean that's like the best the best time. It, you want to like you need to buy fucking Christmas presents for people. You buy them board games and it's indoors and you don't really have to go outside to get there. So the, the people, the people I buy board games for, or the people that I have to buy Christmas gifts for, aren't going to want board. That's their problem, not yours. You buy them board games. It's the thought that counts. Plus, I'm not spending that much money on people. Everybody gets a pack of Pokemon cards. I have so many people I have to buy Christmas gifts for. I'm not spending board game money for everybody. Well, see, this is where you start cutting people out. I mean, or what grouping you, people together. Why do you think I bake cookies for? People? That's fair. That's fair. Like, like it's that, that you know, was me. Cook, cookies are expensive. I, they are. They are. Baking cookies are expensive, and I'm planning on doing about seven or eight different kinds of cookies. Whereas, as opposed cookies. to like five, I know. I think. I think the number is up to ten cookies. Ten different Man. kinds of cookies. I just. I just spent almost a hundred dollars on stuff for Thanksgiving, and it's just for a couple sides. And Erica has to make mac and cheese for work tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like groceries I basically are expensive. Bought, I bought a hundred dollars worth of basically bags of cheese. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds about right. Groceries are expensive. Yeah. Um. Man. But yeah, Rich, get, get, give, that, give that band a shot. When I have a chance, I will. No, right now. Just pop them on. Yeah, I'll just we'll listen wait. to them. I'll <laughs> listen to them while we're recording. Oh, man. And then, Drew, are you going some? Uh, what are you, you're seeing uh, 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 Fox Queen I'm seeing Queen tomorrow. I'm seeing Queen tomorrow, yes. I'm going to be next door seeing Andrew McMahon. Fun. Because I think, I think she's playing Broken Bowl, right? Yep. Yeah, and Andrew McMahon is playing the Fillmore. We'll so be I'll in there I'll super wave early. Why, why early? Uh, Sarah has the VIP meet and greet with oh, Scene nice. Queen. So I forget what time that is, but I want to say like five. Hopefully it's not a fucking shit show of parking over in that area since it's uh, Thanksgiving Eve. Yeah, it probably won't be. I yeah, it's know. like like that early street, that early on a Wednesday street parking shouldn't be bad because they don't open the fucking lots until doors open anymore. Just park at the casino. Yeah, I mean, there is that. Um, that's what we do now. Yeah, uh, like uh, if I can find like um street parking, I'll usually do it. Or if like I know we're gonna go get food, and the lot's open, I will park in the lot just so it's more centrally located. But if yeah. we're get if we're getting there and it's like just for the concert, like yeah, the casino is super easy and free. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we're pro- we'll probably actually go over early too and grab food because 
there's a lot of good restaurants up in that area. True. Yeah. Well, do you guys want to talk about World War Z? Get it out of the way? Let's do it. Ever do it again? Let's do it. All right, now, Rich. Huh? We're not going to lose you this time. No. So we got a backup. Yeah. There's there's no reason that we... You shouldn't have lost me before. Like, there's no reason we should have lost me. Zombies hit your audio. Probably. Probably. It is really... Like, I I wish I could figure out what the fuck happened. As, As far as I remember, it was still recording the entire time. Uh, the only issue is I don't save the save the project. I just I export the audio and I'm done, and I I close out and delete it. There's no reason for me to save the project if I've already s- saved the audio. So I I didn't I didn't check it and test it, but like I don't touch Audacity. There's no reason I would have paused it or stopped it. I don't know who knows, but like uh, my my mouse is on the complete other side. Audacity isn't even the primary window open right now. There's no reason Audacity should go 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 down. All um, right, we'll see. So we we finished World War Z. Yeah, we yep. did. Uh, one thing I want to say beforehand, and like I I know what they're trying to get at. Like my book at least touts about the fact that it was a major major motion picture. But like I don't know, you guys probably both neither of you had seen the World War Z movie. It no, I've has, seen it. It yeah, has, I, I sure as fuck them. <laughs> it has zero to do with this book. Yeah, like that's the, what I the heard. Mo- the movie is actually like a narrative focused on Brad Pitt, and I feel so. I feel the, like it's the movie the, is almost like Brad Pitt is almost like the author of the book because isn't he like a journalist? Uh, he's he's I don't know. He's something, but like the zombies in the movie are fast zombies. They're not slow zombies. The, the, how they end the war is completely, is, is not like, oh, they fight them off. They literally, how the movie ends the war is they realize that zombies aren't attacking sick people. So they make everyone sick with a disease or a virus that will not do anything to them. And it makes the zombies not want to eat them anymore. And that's oh, how wow. they stop the war. I don't the remember that at mo- all. Yeah. Yeah. The, the movie has zero to do with this book. And that, it just it makes I, I me didn't like, know that. It, I think the closest thing is they mention the big wall in the book, and there's a scene with the big wall in the movie. Yeah, they, 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 I guess it might be Iran still, or, 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 yeah, I guess Iran, or whatever, wherever it was, Israel, that has the, the wall, but, um, the, uh, what was the chapter called? So we, we, this, the past two weeks, it was, uh, page 187 to the end, around the world and above, total war and goodbyes. Um, Around the World and Above was the hardest chapter for me to read, because that was fucking boring. It was, a lot of it had nothing, a lot of it was just, like, we survive, basically. And it, it like, I, it wasn't about, like, fighting, it was just about, like, the infrastructure, and how people lived during the, like, the stalemate of the zombie war, basically. And, yeah, there like, was, like, that, the, there was the one chapter about the, the kid, like, the, um, the nerdy kid who, like... Yeah. Spent, like, a week slowly climbing out of his apartment. Yeah, which, like, that one was a little bit more interesting than the rest of... Like, that one and the next chapter, which was about uh, the blind guy from World War II. Like, those two were a little bit more interesting than a vast majority of that final chapter. But that... Or not final chapter, the third to last chapter. But, like, that chapter as a whole was just incredibly boring. Because there was nothing. There It was, it was just... Here's people living during the midpoint of the zombie war and I don't know, I was just incredibly bored. I was also just not in I was I think I was a little too tired to read. And so as I was trying to read it I was falling asleep at points. Um I ended up having to break from reading it every like twenty to thirty pages. Uh and do something else, watch something, eat something, walk around. Because I was just like it was it was a slow go for that chapter. But the the last the the the, the last chapter which was them attacking the zombies, I total war, and then goodbyes. Goodbyes was nothing. It was just a quick chapter of everyone like saying their final thoughts on the war. But like Total Wars was to me was a really good chapter. It's really interesting how they turned around and ended the war essentially. But like as as a book overall, I, I enjoyed it. It's definitely not my normal cup of tea, but I enjoyed it. I, I honestly like I didn't. Um but I knew going in that this was not a book for me. Um I actually, like, I purposely, like, I broke it, especially the second half, I broke it up where I read about 10 pages a day over the two weeks, mm-hmm. um, so that I wasn't, like, burning myself out on it and being, like, disgruntled about it. 
Yeah. Um, and like some days I read a little bit more than that because I was trying to just stop at those um like interstitials, like where it like jumps to like a new person that he's interviewing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think like some of the interviews were slightly more interesting than others, but overall, like this this was not the style of book that I want to read, and the the content of it is not something that actually interests me. Yeah. Like I'm just not into the the apocalypse, war, zombies, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Same. Yeah. Um. But like it could have been far far worse. Like yeah. <laughs> like at least it wasn't like there were plenty of parts of it that I don't think were like super well done. But there was enough of it that was at least like written okay that like it was I was never angry reading it. Mm-hmm. It's probably the best way to put it. Yeah. And like at least it wasn't the movie because the movie was actually worse than the book. The, the movie the movie is wild, man. The movie's so bad. Like the the movie is a, is a major motion picture. In a based off this book, just in the name. That's it. That's all it is. Like they could have named the movie uh, Z Wars or anything else, um, and it, it would have. It, it, this the movie is nothing based on this. Um, yeah, like the, there's a way that they could have adapted this book by like they, having it ha- rather than having it be. There's two ways they could have done it. They could have actually done the book and had like the whole thing been like this reporter going around interviewing people. And just had a bunch of vignettes and just had fewer of them and more, yeah. more focused on like the, the full conflict. Yeah, and they could have or, had the they could have had the, the, the um uh the the uh, what what is what is it called when you do a documentary? Uh, 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 um fucking what's the word? Um when you read when you when you when you have people pretend to be the people that do it. Reenactments. Oh, uh, reenactments. Reenactments, yeah. You could have had reenactments. Uh, of whatever the people were talking about in the interviews and things like that. I mean, yes, like, but I, like I was even thinking just like, you know, he sits down with like a person and as they start telling their story, it just fades to yeah. that actually happening with that actor, like telling yeah. the story. Yeah. Um, they, like, or or instead of having it as like the interview set up, just have it be like, here is here is the contents of this book as it actually was happening rather than in the past. It's like. Here's the outbreak leading up to the war, leading up yeah. to the resolution. Yeah. Um, Which, like, honestly, I think the book would have been better if it was just that way. If it was, like, essentially diary snippets from these different people, not their, like, post-event recounting of everything. I, like, if you didn't already, if you, each part, you didn't already know, everything you're being told is from the perspective of somebody that has already survived everything. Yeah, actually, I, you know, like, yeah, that actually, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. Because I, I, I feel like that removes a little bit of the drama from everything, is to know, well, okay, this is the, this is someone talking about it after the fact. There, there we go, there we go, Drew, Drew, who cares about spoilers, Haycock over here, saying that he, he thought the movie, the book was more boring because he had spoilers. <laughs> like, that's actually, that's funny. Am I, am I... <laughs> Am I am I not wrong? That's what you're saying is because you knew that everything ended fine, you found the book more boring. Yes. So if you didn't know, if it wasn't spoiled that the war was fine and they ended it, you would have maybe found it a little bit more interesting. Maybe. I it think it would have just been. A, it would have been, been a better stuff. narrative choice <laughs> than the, the way it's written. I, I feel like I I I don't know I I can't. Agree, but I can't disagree on that. On that one, I I feel like that in in an in in the in the sense of talking about the book, I feel like that's kind of split in hairs. Like it's it's six and one half dozen in the other. Like it's kind of it's it kind of, it gets the it'll get the story across in the same way whether you do it one way or the other. It's just it it, it is just fully preference. But if you're comparing it, what this book is to the movie and how the movie has nothing to do with the book, it diff- it definitely would have the movie definitely would have done better to do something like that. Well, because... I think the well the movie is essentially just the dude living through the thing. It's not. I mean, flashback. barely. It, it's but... so disconnected from the book. Well, I I just mean remove completely the book. It's not this character, but, but the movie is. You're watching that characters going yeah. through, yes. yeah, and but like our our more so our points when it comes to the movie at least, and why I'm laughing at it is that the movie should not have been based. They should they there is nowhere in this world that I feel you could say that that movie is based off of this book. 
Oh, that is what I have heard. <laughs> there, like this, that movie is not based off of this book. The, that movie is based off of this book in name alone, and that's it. And that's mm-hmm. what we're saying. Like they could have made a better movie off of this book if they had did did it either like this other style and not like they still could have had Brad Pitt. They still could have had all the big names, but they just yeah, it, it was just it's it's weird. It's weird. Yeah, I will say as far as like the the diary entries versus like the 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 interviews, I think the thing that it would have added that little bit of suspense to it of right not knowing if like something worked out for like a particular person versus knowing that like okay, well like maybe somebody they cared about died but they didn't. It, mm-hmm. it adds that little bit more. Uh, it gives you a little something compelling as you're reading that right. a lot of these a lot of these chapters lacked any real like connection. Um, especially in in this section, the the um above and below or whatever it was called, the that mm-hmm. first chunk that we read, like Rich, mm-hmm. like you said, like it was just very dry. Like it was, yeah. there was nothing there to make you want to keep reading it. And yeah. I feel like if there had been more of a human connection there, by like not knowing if people made it, yeah. it would have made it a, just a little bit more interesting to get through. Yeah. Mm-hmm. and like th- there were there were some sections, like I said, there were some sections in that in that chapter that were interesting. The Japan stuff was very interesting to me. Um, the South Korea stuff was kind of like, eh, I don't really care. Cause South Korea was basically saying, Oh yeah, by the way, North Korea doesn't exist anymore. Like North Korea is just gone. Um, then there was the whole section about the sub that, that, that left the, the Chinese, was it China? No, Russian sub? Yeah. Chinese sub? No, no, it Chinese was China. Sub. China. Chinese sub. The Chinese sub, which I was like, okay, this is interesting. This actually kept me in. But then like, it was, Cuba, where Cuba was just like, oh yeah, we, we, because we were, uh, locked off from the rest of the world, we really didn't have an outbreak and we were fine. And it, like, to me, that just like, it made the chapters less interesting. Like, I don't, I don't care to read about Cuba, not because I don't care about Cuba, but because there's no actual reason for me, for you to tell me that Cuba was fine. Because Cuba's fine. We already know the war is over. You don't need to tell me that Cuba didn't have a war because no one went to Cuba. Um, the, the I, I really like the China portion of that chapter, but like fifty fifty was that like some some of it was just boring, some of it was good. Um, mm-hmm. and then the uh the total war to me felt more of a war story. Like it 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 did lean like because it was about killing the zombies. Like that's probably the hardest. Where, in my opinion, the hardest that they leaned on the zombie stuff, I feel like a lot of this book was a very solid war book or war memorial, I guess. Remember, I guess. Um, but yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. I, I, I liked, I thought Total War was a really good chapter. I thought the chapter before the last chapter we read last, last week or two weeks ago was really good. And leading up to that chapter was really good. It was just that the longest chapter in the book was, had some of the driest content in it and that like it made it hard for me to read through i and normally i could get like a hundred pages even though it'll take me three to four hours i could get a hundred pages done in a sitting i couldn't do that this time understandably like it was i don't know like yeah like that that middle section was just it was very dry and dull the 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 second to last section was a little bit more interesting because it did get back a little bit to more of like the the human story of yeah it. yeah but it was still like i feel like like that that midway point is where a book that I already wasn't really feeling kind of like fell off pretty hard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like they really, with goodbyes, the very last chapter, I feel like there were a couple of instances that they should have like reestablished who that, who they, who it was. For instance, uh, when he's talking to the wacko, I completely forgot who the wacko was until it was mentioned like two pages later in that chapter that the wacko was the vice president or president at the time. And I was just like, oh, oh, right. That's who that, and that's who he was talking to. Yeah. Cause the names weren't used a ton in their little segment. Yeah. So like remembering right, yeah. who some of these people are is like, I don't remember what it was about you that makes this any sort of interesting. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, and I was, I was honestly very down on the, uh, the Russia part where, like, the woman's just like, oh yeah, all women now are just here to procreate. And it's just like, well, fuck. Um, I didn't like that. Like, I feel like, uh, some of that chapter, if not all of that final goodbyes chapter, probably just really didn't need to be there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. 
the real quick cop your point about how like the names don't really get used much in their each individual section is why i don't like how this book was written in an interview style like it, like you said the names don't get used so you just get totally divorced from the characters when it's just i me blah 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 and not the i feel like the the writer the the interviewer should have been interstitching back in like the character's name said blah 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 and not just this whole big chunks of essentially it really read like diary entries that mm-hmm. were an interview and just you get you get disconnected from the characters in each part yeah i i that's why like to me my mind's eye when i was reading this i was reading this as if i was watching an interview watching a televised or recorded interview series or something like that. And that like that kept me more connected with who you who who was talking was because I wasn't reading it as if I was reading a book, even though that's what the book is. I was reading it as if I was in this world watching this interview scene. Which is really what this should have been. It should have been a it should be a uh, not should be like they don't have to make it a televised interview series, but like something like this would do really well as a a mockumentary televised in, uh, interview series or something like that. Right. Yeah. 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 I will say I'm glad to have read this, so now I can definitively say it's not good. <laughs> it, it, like, not that it's not good. It's just that you don't like it. No, no. Like, like I'm going to tell people when they ask no, me that it's not good because I'm not sitting here saying finished business is bad. I'm just saying that it's just. I, I hated it because it was fucking boring to me, and it's not my kind of book, and I don't care about Ray Didinger because but I you're a nicer person. No, I'm as a person. I'm going to say this book is bad. No, you didn't even like it. You're just no. being nice to it. No, I liked it. I liked it. It's look it, based on the three books we read. This is my mid book for sure. I enjoyed Jurassic Park a hell of a lot more than I enjoyed this book, and I say I, I thought I thought. Finished business was bottom tier because it was just the subject matter and stories that I did not care about. And so that is bottom. I'm not, I, I'm sure Finished Business was written fine and is an absolutely fine book. And for someone who might like, might be, enjoy Ray Dettinger and his writing, this will be a book for them. And I already have my buddy, I'm led in my book. My, my finished business to a buddy of mine who went to school for journalism and wanted to do sports journalism and has read Didinger's previous books because I know he would want to read this book. But I, to me, it was just, it's not, it wasn't a bad book. I just don't like it. Just flat out don't like it. Yeah, but see, World War Z was a, was a bad book. So. It, it wasn't, though. <laughs> it wasn't. Why do you think it would be a major motion picture? Because if it Hollywood was a bad has book. no ideas because zombies were hot in 2013 and oop, this is a zombie property nobody had bought yet didn't that movie come out earlier than that i, I don't i swear when i just googled it said 2013 but maybe I'm wrong. I, I holy don't know shit what... that was 2013 i would have said it was like 2009 oh, yeah. yeah holy no. crap yeah i thought i saw 2013 when i said yeah 2013 wow. fucking that's still a fucking decade ago but yeah that that's why, like again, to the point, if if the book was actually that well written, why was the movie not anything to like the book? <laughs> like they just they literally because just paid for the name. They paid for the name because they needed a name for they needed to be able yeah. to sell. They again, like you said, if it was 2013, that was in the middle of the zombie craze where zombies were all over right. the place. They needed a a notable name, and the World War Z and the Zombie Survival Guide were some of the bigger zombie titles in books out there they couldn't take the walking dead because the walking dead was a series at that point i believe so like it was it, it that's all, why all... zombies got so big in 2013 yeah. because of the yeah, walking dead was, exactly. they 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 bought the name because they used the idea like oh he's going to be going around the world to figure out the zombie outbreak and to stop it like they bought the name because mel brooks <laughs> This was a, a total, it's a total nepotism play. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure they, yeah. Based on the book of, yeah. from if Mel it was Brooks' a good, son, If it was like, a good book, they would have adapted the book. Th- that's the thing. They they already had the story written and probably filmed before they figured out the fucking name. <laughs> like, that's... I that's, mean, you, yeah. Yes, that is probably true. Um, But look, Lord of the Rings, most popular fantasy series, series of all time, absolute garbage. Like, he, you know, he, shit, people like shitty things all the time. Uh, sure, probably. <laughs> oh, 
Is is there anything else anyone wants to say about World War Z? No, not really. All right. Yeah, like I said, it, like I'm not mad I read it. Like it was, you know, it's a book, and it wasn't that long of a book either. Yeah. Um. So we got we got another book club to pick. Um. So here is my question: Do we want to go back to movies since the strike is over, or do we want to um keep up this trend of like doing different things each time and try something different? Because I have a thought that you well, guys are welcome to veto. I had I had also proposed doing like audio drama type things. Right, you did you did propose that. I did actually try to look and find something and I couldn't find any. Mhm. Um so if you have two and and or three if if Drew doesn't have one either, I'm up for doing it. But like I legitimately don't know any. I'm sure I could find some, but what what is your suggestion? Because if I have to find all of them, I'd have to even think about which one I would suggest. Next. <laughs> um yeah, like I so to be clear, I'm not opposed to audio dramas. I've just never listened to them, other than the the two you had to listen to two years ago. Yeah, I don't even know how to find them. Um, so my thought, we do a video game. I'd probably be down for that. Um, so I I say we we put a little stipulation on it. Um, it's got to be something easily easy, uh, easily 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 <laughs> <laughs> easily obtainable by the three of us without having to like dish out. So like. Um, Game Pass, if we can sign up for, like, a Game Pass trial if you don't have it already, um, like, a PS Plus game that we've all gotten, um, Switch Online, so, like, something like that, and no, like, 300-hour RPGs, you know, keep it reasonable, 200-hour RPGs, <laughs> you know, the the stuff that Richie likes to have on stream. Yes, I don't, t- I, I don't <laughs> like to have this stuff on stream. I don't know, I you don't. Why was, th- them, so. why was three quarters of 2023 RPGs, then? Because everyone kept requesting me to play RPGs. So you know those, you know those 10,000 points that you keep saying are too hard to get? Somebody used that three times this year. That person has a problem. No, twice this year. Twice this year? Yeah. So one RPG I chose to play. And then they have used it twice now for Star Ocean and, uh, Divine Force and now Star Ocean Remake. Like, oh, they're making you play another Star Ocean? Yeah, it's the remake of fucked. a second story. Which, didn't you fine. not like the last one? No, I I didn't. I I enjoyed the last one more than uh, more than I liked um, uh, Tales of Arise for sure. Uh, I just I I didn't push to do everything because I was RPG'd out. Um, so how yeah. about a, a PS one era RPG? I, yeah. Look, I uh, I'm hesitant to say yes to video games unless maybe it's a sub ten hour game. No, that that is actually um, that that's exactly what I was thinking. Like but, something, either something that can be more or less done in one sitting. Um, because to be fair, like when I was thinking about this, I was thinking about stuff that you could also probably get away with on your streams and not be like angry about. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, so I was thinking of either kind of like something that something one and done, like 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 a Sonic that Sonic the Hedgehog two. Um, it's on the the online thing for Switch, or like. A Metroid, or like uh, one of like the N sixty four Zelda games, or something like that. Like something that like like the Zelda games are a little bit longer, but they're not ridiculously long. I and we could I, we don't have to necessarily beat those. Like we could just set like a let's play Ocarina of Time through childhood, and that's definitely under ten hours. I I don't know. I it's I'm not I'm not against it, but it's just like it's that's that is. It's weird to, weird to say, seeing as how we just read three books. That is a little bit more of a dedication timing thing for game. Like, I could, I could do it off stream, but it then it would also turn into, I would want to beat the game if it's a game that you can't beat in the time that we're picking, even if it's something I've played in the past. Well, that's why uh, I was thinking, like, stuff that maybe you, you would want to play on stream versus just, like, something completely random. It, this way, like, this is a self-imposed issue, but it can't be. It, I won't be on stream because I'm in the middle of playing Baldur's Gate, uh, which is taking up so much of my time. Um, I thought you were only doing that once a week. Are you doing it more than that? I am only doing it once a week right now because I have to catch up on other stream events. But it'll be back to twice a week once I catch up on. Uh, probably starting next week, I'll be doing it twice a week again on Sundays and Mondays. Oh, see, I thought you were just going to keep it to once a week. No, no, there's, I, I need to play that more. Otherwise, I'm going to get burnt out. But I, I, the, every time I play it, I get frustrated. I'm starting to be convinced that that game just isn't for me. 
I was going to um, say, if, if you're not having fun, don't play it. Because that makes bad content. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, you complained about the the giant bomb guys fucking hating Mario Party. There's 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 a difference between between that and me, just in the fact that, to me, it seemed like they were sitting there hating on Mario Party just to hate on Mario Party, and, and not really giving it the college try, or caring to give it the college try, whereas I'm actually, like, trying, and I'm just having a hard time. But that's what I mean, like, it's not, it, it's not fun to watch somebody not have a good time if they're not at least yeah. leaning into and, having and a bad time. And yeah. uh, that's... That's like that's where it's like I'm. Uh, I also have so many other big games that I have, like. I have to play Shenmue One and then Star Ocean. That like I just when it comes to streaming, my schedule is pretty damn set right now. That like I I'm not gonna diverge. I'm not gonna jump off and play something else. Like I've only played City Skylines Two for about six hours, and that was just on stream. Well, you so said you didn't like, like that one though, too, right? No, I didn't say I didn't like it. I'm just it's missing. No, man, all you, of... you were on here for an hour ranting about how much it, garbage it was. It's missing everything that made City Skylines One good. Um, and it, it re- they really should have put all that stuff in there, and we're hoping it does. But it's still it's a it's a fun City Skylines game. It's just it's missing a lot of content that City Skylines One had. That was, and that's issue. why the solution is you play Ocarina of Time. <laughs> Maybe I, I, I'm I am kidding. Like like it, if it would be that big of like uh, a kind of hindrance to you actually having a good time, then like it's not worth doing. Like the whole idea of this is like to have something to talk about, but to not like make everybody miserable. I mean, I'm I'm all down for us picking a game to play together, but I don't see why that has to take place at book club. Well, because why don't, I, why don't so the reason just... I suggested book club was because it gives us that little bit more of a hey, we're gonna do this in two weeks. But why do why for uh, what, what why can't we do both? Why can't we say hey, let's play a game over the next couple of weeks? And, and and whatnot, like just nonchalantly play it whenever you get a chance. But also, here's our book club. Here's our movie. Here's our book. Here's our video game. Or not video game. Here's our audio man. Now drama, you're now you're just double dipping video games and video games. Jeez, <laughs> you, you know you know what I mean. Like you, I, I, but like I don't I don't I I don't understand why why the limitation to book club for a video game. I mean, it's not so much a limitation. It was just like a, I was throwing it out there as like a. Do we want to keep doing things that are slightly different or like dip back into movies since it's been six months? I, I mean, again, I, I'll, I'll, I'll go with the masses. I'll go with you guys. If, if the three, if, if majority rules, I'll go with it. But I guess my argument is video games aren't different because we talk about video games all the time because that's what we do and that's what we play. We talk about movies a lot we too. Talk, yeah. We t- arguably we talk about movies and shit more than we talk about video games on this show. True. Rich, you and I watch a lot of stupid shit. True. True. Because <laughs> keep in mind, I have not watched a new movie in fucking four years. That can't be true. All right. I've watched No, one. you've you've literally watched new movies because we've done new movies for Book Club. Prey was a new movie. Oh, that's right. Oh, right. Prey was new. I forgot and there has I, been a and, few of and, those, like... Yeah, we've done new movies on Book Club. Yeah, I kind of forgot that some of them were. But that might be it. And by new, I mean probably released within the last four years. Well, I would even say within the last, like, year. Like, I feel like we've done at least one or two. No, we've done a few within the last year, but we've done a good number within the last, that had released within the last. I mean, if we watch something this year that came out in 2019, I don't, that's not, like. But But if you're saying you haven't watched a new movie in the last four years, but you've watched a movie that released within the last four years, then technically you've watched a new movie within the last four years. I mean, there, there. there is a couple, but yeah, like, fuck. Don't, I mean, don't leave it to me, Richie, because I will not pick movies. I know you won't pick movies. <laughs> I know you won't pick movies. Um, well, you know, what? Let, let's just make it easy for everybody, and we'll go with Drew's favorite, and we'll watch movies. <laughs> Fine. Um, no, I mean, like, legitimately, like, we we did, we never actually did Groundhog's Day because the strike happened the week before we were going to do that. Oh so, like, yeah, we, that's right. We can always circle back and we can watch Groundhog's Day. And yeah, we can watch enjoy Groundhog's, Groundhog's Day, Day. And then I think Cobb, it would be your choice for another time loop movie. Yeah, yeah, because that one would have been Drew's, and then yeah, I would have had one because yeah. you picked um that one with uh the dude from the Marvel movie that was in a time loop. I forget the name of the movie and the actor's name. Boss level and yeah, um, that one. 
uh, fucking, he played Crossbones. Yeah. Yeah, that guy. Mm-hmm. See, yeah. you knew what I meant. But yeah, let, let, let's, let's jump back. We'll do Groundhog's Day because at least that's an enjoyable movie. I feel like, Drew, even you won't be miserable watching Groundhog's Day. That's likely. Yeah, it's Bill Murray. Like, has Bill Murray ever made a bad movie? I'm sure. I mean, not counting Garfield. Oh, right. Garfield exists. Uh, there's gotta be something else that wasn't. I feel like there, nothing that he was like the, like a star of. I'm sure there, I'm sure he has cameoed in something that wasn't good. But like, even his cameo in fucking Zombieland made that fucking movie. That movie wouldn't be half as good if it, if Bill Murray didn't, wasn't in it. You know what? Here's the thing. According to the world, Quantum Mania was a bad movie and Bill Murray's in. He's a, isn't he a small part in that? Uh, like, isn't he just in one scene? Cause that's what I mean. Like, a movie that he stars in hasn't been bad. I mean, uh, I, you, I, Ghostbusters, right? Great movie. Groundhog's Day. I remember it being good. It's been like 30 years. But like, 10 year old me probably had good taste in movies. I liked Aladdin, right? But all right. So in two weeks, we will watch Groundhog's Day. And then, you know, maybe, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll put our heads together and figure out like another different thing to do and then kind of sprinkle movies in and out just so we're not doing them all the time. Holy yeah. shit, I forgot Bill Murray's in Wild Things. Oh, yeah, he is. <laughs> he, like, he's been in a lot of stuff. Uh, what is next on this agenda? Oh, so I played, um, I played some of the Persona Tactics game, Persona 5 Tactica. Nice. I forgot this was a thing that was going to happen. The I, tactics I, game? Yeah. I, I watched Critical Role play it as an RPG, as a tabletop RPG. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, yeah. You, you sent me the link for that the other day. How long was that? Because I didn't actually get a chance to, like, Four look. Four hours? How, let's say it one more time. Four hours? Okay, so, like, an average Critical Role episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's not terrible, and it's it's an enjoyable time. It's one. It's just a normal one-shot, where it's just like, we got we got to get things done, so let's go. Are, are they pretending to be the characters from the game, they're, or are they they're original pretending. characters? They're, they're doing original characters in the universe of Persona 5 Tactica. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, so Persona 5 Tactica, it, um, it's actually on Game Pass, which is why I just kind of jumped into it, because I kind of forgot it had come out. Um, I actually, at Anime NYC, which, oh shit, I was at Anime NYC too, I'll talk about that later. <laughs> um, whoops. Uh, P5, or Persona 5 Tactics, I saw a billboard for it, and that's what reminded me, and the billboard said Game Pass, I'm like, cool, I can just go home and play it on Game Pass. Um, let's see, it's a tactics game, so Drew, you'd probably enjoy that part of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it's pretty standard, like, like I played about an hour of it, so I've just kind of gotten through the tutorial section of the, the battling. It's pretty standard, like, you move, you move based on tiles, you can hide behind things to um, negate enemy attacks. Different attacks that you have can actually knock enemies into other tiles, so depending on, like, what you can do, um, I already found a couple of situations where uh, one of the characters, their starting, like, magic ability is wind. And the wind will knock the enemy back like three or four tiles, um, including over obstacles. So there were some situations where like you could line yourself up to hit them with that, and it would knock them into a group of enemies. And then you could come up with your other character and use an AOE and manage to hit all the enemies instead of just one or two of them. Mm-hmm. Which you know, like that that adds like a nice little bit of like strategy to it, like kind of like cycling through your your available characters and seeing kind of like what each one can do for a given fight before you actually start making any solid plans. Yeah. Um and the cast of Persona 5 again, which I love that cast. Um li- little weird figuring out where the game is taking place. Um so it seems like it's taking place after like the main events of the game, but like before the end of the game. Like in that like weird kind of middle ground where the main character has not left to go back to his hometown. Um but all of the metaverse stuff has been wrapped up because there, mm-hmm. there's like an offhanded comment that one of the characters makes that the app should be gone. Um, and then another character makes a comment that, um, they're about to, that the third years are about to graduate and they show the one character who in the game is a third year and she is still in her school uniform. So it's obviously not the next year. Um, and Persona 5 Strikers, the, um, the Mousseau one that came out a couple years ago. That one was set post game, like over like a summer break or something like that. Mm-hmm. So this one seems to be like getting plopped down, kind of in the middle. Um, so far, so far it's good though. You know, like you, you start the game right away and you get to see all the characters again. Um, I wasn't sure if I was gonna like the art style because it's got that kind of like weird, like chibi look to it. But it, the animations and stuff actually are are 
really nice, so that's not bothering me. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's good so far. I'm looking forward to actually playing some more of it. I wanted to do it today, but I forgot I had to run to the grocery store and buy all that mac and cheese stuff. Mac and um, cheese. And fucking Wegmans was a shit show today. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. I have to... I still need to get uh, buttermilk because buttermilk goes bad so fast, so I don't buy it until the day before I need it or the day that I need it. Um, and I have to... I'm going to be walking to ShopRite tomorrow to pick it up. Um... Yeah, I, I it, it looks good. It looks interesting. I've always wanted to play like the Persona games. Get into them. I've always said every time you talk about Persona, I've said I've played fast and never beat it. Um, I I've been wanting to play a tactics game. I've been wanting to play a tactical game. And like you can argue that Baldur's Gate is a tactical game, but it's it's not. It's not. Not um, like this. Not not, not that, yeah. that like grid based tactics yeah, style. Not not like this. It's more free flowing. Um, still very tactical in a sense, but. Um, it's it's just not it's not hitting that tactics edge that I really want, and and I've been looking into maybe getting Persona Five Tactica, but like I said, my lineup is is just set for a while, so I'm not going to be doing like many new things. Um, I mean, it's until... it's Game Pass, so like when you do want to play it, you probably don't have to pay for it. Hopefully, as long as it's still on Game Pass. Um, well, they have that deal going right now because all of the Persona games are being put on the Game Pass. So yeah. I imagine it'll be there for a while. Yeah. Um, I will say, I don't know for sure how well this game would work if you've never played it before, like played the Persona game before, if you care about the narrative. Because mm-hmm. um, the game just does just start out where you're at the cafe that the main character sleeps at. Um, the characters are all just kind of like talking like it's like you just got done playing a section of the original game. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you just kind of get dropped right into like the 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 alternate world that this game seems seems to be taking place in. Which that to me is kind of weird that they did that. In my opinion, like it's it's because it, it's it's it, I guess they're making it a sequel to a title that like is in a a a game franchise that doesn't often have direct sequels, and now it's had basically two direct sequels to it. Um. That like that's just kind of awkward that they're doing something like that to this. Like, and it's not just like I don't know, like Hyrule Warriors, where it's just it's a, it's its own thing. Well, wasn't the the one Hyrule Warriors like a prequel to Breath of the Wild or something like that? Yeah, which honestly, that's fine. You wouldn't have needed to know what was going on in Breath of the Wild to understand what's going on in Hyrule Warriors too. But then they did the whole time travel bullshit from Hyrule War- Warriors. To Hyrule Warriors 2, or from Breath of the Wild to Hyrule Warriors, which just really isekai the shit out of that and made it fucking terrible and annoying. Um, but yeah, you, they're, they're, that's like, that, it, it's, it's different because it's like, you're, you're, you're giving me a prequel. And so you don't need to know the events of the sequel because it's a prequel. Or like, if this were a prequel and you would have like, it would have been a different cast of, ca- or just a different cast of characters entirely, it, to me, it'd be a little less weird, if that makes sense. Yeah, but I think I think part of the draw of this, it's not so much to release a tactics game or like for strikers to release a Musou game. It is to release a game based on characters and a world that people were already yeah. really invested in. Yeah. So like I can understand why they they linked it to the the main story so much because you don't really play the Persona games for the combat. Like it, no. it's standard like um turn-based combat where like they, they add some cool flourishes to it but like there's not a whole lot else to it than that um like you're playing persona 5 or 4 or whatever for the story and the character um that's why like half that game is spent doing like weird just interactive quests to bond with the the other characters in the world yeah. outside of the actual dungeon crawling aspect um yeah so like this one like i think the weird thing with this one is the fact that it's picking up kind of like in the middle of a narrative um and it's it's kind of hard to tell where it's happening cuz like it seems to be like march ish so i got the impression it like school is almost over they graduate in like march april um and it's definitely the same school year that the game takes place in so it's just in in like a weird kind of limbo er- era and it's not so far at least there's nothing from the royal game being used in it so like the royal was the one where it added the um the extra character and the extra mm-hmm. dungeon. Um possible that stuff shows up at some point like maybe this game is actually happening before that stuff would have happened in the main story. I don't really know. Yeah. Um 
but yeah, so far, like, the, the setup was interesting. Um, they give you a reason to not just have your full team of characters right away, which is nice. And yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to, I'm looking forward to seeing the, the battles get a little more challenging. It's mm-hmm. so, like up, up front, it was very easy. It was like, beat all the enemies, beat all the enemies while also getting to this point on the map, um, to like, quote unquote, escape. So like, yeah. like, mm-hmm. fairly straightforward. They do have little mini objectives in each battle, like, Beat it in more than, or beat it in under X amount of rounds, beat it, um, taking less than X amount of hits, like stuff like that, um, that net you additional experience or like other little perks in it. That's cool. Yeah. And I haven't hit a point where like the persona side of it has really come in yet. Like in those games, you usually have like, you get personas that you then get to swap to them and have different abilities. Mm-hmm. Um, so far, like, they just have like their default personas with them, um, so I'm I'm curious to see like how that will play out because the the enemies we're fighting do not seem like personas right now, so I'm not sure like which route they're going to go in, but I'm going to keep playing. I'm going to find out. Nice. Yeah. It sounds it sounds good. It, it, it's definitely on my radar, but I just yeah. So many at, games. at least in the, the the early bit of it, like like I really enjoyed it. So because mm-hmm. it, it kind of it mixes the two things I really enjoyed, which are that cast of characters in that world with, like, the, the strategy tactics gameplay. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but I guess, I guess aside from that real quick, um, since I, since I was there, um, Anime NYC was this past weekend, um, up in New York, obviously, at the Javits Center, where they do a much better job using the Javits Center than New York Comic Con does. Mm-hmm. That's good. Yeah. Um, it's wild. So, like, and I think I've said this before about this convention, like, it, it gets bigger every year. Um, they're still just using, like, the main show floor. So, Rich, like, the main expo floor that was overcrowded at, an, at um, New York Comic Con last yeah. year. Um, yeah. That is the only room, really, that um, Anime NYC uses, other than some of, like, the panel and, like, um, viewing room things. Mm-hmm. And so they fit their artist alley, their, like, expo hall, and, like, gaming all in that room. And, like, they have a lot of shit there, but, like, they actually put, like, space between the aisles. So oh, when like tables have move. like, yeah. So like some some aisles, it still gets a little crowded, and you still have to do like a like, hey, excuse me, and like like squeeze by somebody. But it's not like at New York Comic Con where you li- you can't even do that because there's 300 people on either side of the aisle just blocking everything and like taking pictures and talking on their fucking cell phones. Mm-hmm. Um, like there's enough of an aisle between everything that like you can actually like dodge and weave and get around and also still walk up to like the booths and like see what they're selling yeah which is also almost impossible to do at new york comic-con new york comic-con is such a clusterfuck i i i i wanted to go back this year but i also hated it so much yeah like i enjoy going to it but it's also one of those things where like if i couldn't go i'm not gonna be like sad about it yeah because like All right it's it's hard to get around there like it's hard to see stuff like at this point like i know a few people that table at at, at those so it's nice to go up there and see those people that, like, I don't see often. And, yeah. like, I think the panels can often be okay. But, like, this past year, there were no panels worth going to because there were strikes and stuff going on. Yeah. Um. But, yeah, Anime NYC, like, generally, like, like I think that they do a really good job with that whole show. Um. They have plenty of food to, like, get on the show floor, too, which is nice. Since it's no it's November, you don't have to go stand outside at the food truck lines. Mm-hmm. Um. They've gotten better about the, like, getting in and out, too. There was the one year where, to, every time you left one entrance, cause, like, the, like, the show floor has a couple entrances, you basically had to go back and, like, go back through security checks. Like, like, bag check or whatever to get back into it. It, it was such a, a poorly laid out, like, idea. And now, like, they have all that stuff bumped out a little bit further. So, like, as long as you don't go to, like, the entry area, you're always in the convention. You don't have to redo bag check and everything. That's good. That's good. Yes. Yeah, because yeah, that, that was a clusterfuck the one year. I want to say it was like 2019, maybe 2021. Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't last year either. I feel like last year was a little bit better too. But like this year, I, this year, every place has those like, you don't even have to take shit out of your pocket detectors. Yeah. Like you just walk through them and like, I feel like they just randomly flag people sometimes because I've definitely gone through there and not gotten flagged. Then gone through one with the exact same shit in my pockets and gotten flagged. <laughs> It's probably what it is. They're probably, like, they probably have to just randomly grab people every, like, say every ten or something like that. They have to grab somebody random. 
Right. Uh, it's right. probably protocol, just to, like, make sure they're... Which is dumb, because, like, maybe that person you're grabbing isn't the person that has the illicit thing, but make sure that whoever... Their, their machines are working properly by identifying what's in your bag properly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I've definitely... And, like, so their thing, like, it wasn't scanning bags... They, they they actually had like a like an airport that like um like bag belt thing whatever I can't think of what those things are called right now like the things that X ray the bags mm-hmm. um they actually had one of those for like large bags to go through um which is not something I'm used to seeing at these conventions it's usually manual bag checks um but I, and like I've seen from like the side of security the the screen that they're looking at it does give them like a very obvious like yes or no like if that de- if that thing detects any sort of metal on you. Um, that is enough to, I guess, be considered a potential weapon. Um, they just get like a big red X on the screen and they know to like send you off to the side. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. but, but yeah, so like getting in and out, super easy. Um, it is a little weird because I'm like a month ago we were at New York Comic Con and like generally there are like booths and stuff set up outside. There's all the food trucks. There's hundreds of people like just sitting out there. Um, cosplayers getting pictures taken. It's a fucking ghost town outside at this one. Like Rich, you, you know, like like where the food trucks were at New York Comic Con. Do you remember that area? Like, yeah. Kind of like under the overpass. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's just empty this weekend. the The only people that were outside were like two security people making sure that no one like came in through like the out line. Mm-hmm. It was weird. Um. But otherwise, like the the show floor was good. Um. It's a lot of like weird stuff as far as things you can buy goes because it's an anime convention. So a lot of like surprising amount of clothes. Um, and like, like fashiony things, but mm-hmm. then tons of like, um, like prop weapons, uh, lots of model kits, lots of statues. Um, every year I feel like the manga and the actual like anime DVD Blu ray sellers are just like going, getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Yeah. Um, there also was surprisingly not a lot of like the big booths that were at, um, New York Comic Con. Like, there was, New York Comic Con had like the giant Viz booths that had um a giant Luffy, um a giant Goku, a really big Kurama from Naruto, a bunch of other Dragon Ball standees. Um, none of those were at this one, and it's like they used their whole budget at New York Comic Con. And they're just like, we can't even afford to just have this stuff set up again <laughs> at yeah. the same fucking place. Yeah. Um, I did see uh Justin Papa while I was there though. Nice, nice. Um, How they doing? They're doing good. Um, well, as good as they can do with with the state of the Japanese yen at the moment. <laughs> is it bad? It is like so. One U.S. dollar is worth like a hundred and fifty yen, which is a approximately a dollar fifty. Jesus. So like, it's pretty bad. Jesus. Yeah. I didn't know that much. Yeah. Like, so usually Inti actually has like a pr- they've a, they've a pretty elaborate booth. Um. Mm-hmm. Like, they, they get a good section of the show floor. They have, like, TVs mounted on, like, stands with, like, um, the demos on it. They have, like, a whole, like, cash wrap area with, like, the products they're selling. And, like, a little storage area behind it where, like, you can also go to, like, sit down and, like, take your break or do other work that you have to do back there. Um, this year, they, they literally just had four folding tables in a square and some cheap Vizio TVs set up with, like, switches connected hmm. to them. Jesus. Yeah, because it, it, it was cheaper to do that than to um than to have like their whole booth set up mm-hmm. but like their booth was still like like i hung out there like talking to uh to papa for like an hour or so on friday the booth was like consistently pretty busy so like that's awesome for them um and i know they sold out they, they just had a game release um that i can't remember the name of um but they had like their like fancy big special edition physical copy there and they sold out of that by like saturday early afternoon nice yeah so like at, at least they made some money back on the cost of like the show with and they made it in USD which is going to become much more money when they get it uh converted over. Yeah. But yeah, so like, like their booth w- was fun. Um it was it was also fun watching people play Bloodstained. Uh, um they had like a demo for it. And a lot of people would sit down and you could tell they've never played a Castlevania game before. Mm-hmm. Um cuz it like it was like 10 minutes to get through like I want to say it was like the first stage and it actually gave you all four characters to play with. And a lot of people were just like, I have no idea what to do. They were just like swapping between characters, jumping in the pits. It was, it was amusing. That's but, sad. Yeah. Um, also for whatever reason, they had the fucking Marines there, like doing like, like pull up challenges. I'm like, this is weird, guys. Like find a better place to recruit than a fucking anime convention. I, I actually take anyone they can get. 
I saw a, a TikTok or a reel or something of um, this girl. She was in a Jujutsu Kaisen cosplay. The person with the black lines on their face. I think that's a JJK cosplay. Yeah, I, I, I think um, I think I know which one you're talking about. Uh, she 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 did it, and uh, like she like she did ten pull ups, and like she blew the uh the 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 marines away. Like all the marines were shocked, but it's like she's at this point aged out of the military. So like she's at least twenty some mid twenties. So like you're not necessarily aged out of the military, but aged out of the marines for sure. Yeah, yeah. Which you know, at least she was able yeah. to do all those pull ups. Yeah. Um, there, there were a lot of good cosplays too. Um, I, I know Erica posted a couple, um, on the Instagram as we were there. Um, but like just people were doing some really, some really good ones. Um, and like some surprising ones. Like I saw quite a few people dressed as, um, characters from Soul Eater, Mm -hmm. which is not a new show or a relevant show in any stretch. And I think I saw like three different groups doing that. And, like, I don't know why, but they did a good job, so why the fuck not? Yeah. Um, and then Artist Alley was cool. Um, I, I, I've told a couple people this. Um, the level of just horniness that you find at anime conventions is it's wild. just crazy. Yeah. So, they're, like, walking through Artist Alley, like, like, there's tons of, like, super cool stuff, and there's always just, like, the things that make you a little uncomfortable to even see in public. Um, like... They're, they're not so explicit that they can't see them, but it's like, why did you even draw that? Like, that's not how bodies work. Mm-hmm. Um, so, Friday, the show opened at 2 p.m. So, 2 p.m., I get onto the show floor. By 2.15, there were three tables that had massive lines in Artist Alley. Um, two of them, the lines were nothing but guys, and it was very horny, like, female artwork. Um... And then the the third line, nothing but girls, very horny anime boys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, well, at at least there's a little bit for everybody. Yeah. Meanwhile, Eric and I bought four of these really cool prints. Um, I'll have to send send pictures to the chat or something. Um, two of them are Pokemon in food, and two of them are like Studio Ghibli things in food. Nice. Um, so one of them, uh, the, one of the Studio Ghibli ones, it's Calcifer, um, cooking like a pan of eggs and bacon. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah, and then there's a, the, the white and green dragon from Spirited Away wrapped around, um, Onigiri. And then we got Bulbasaur in a basket of apples and an Umbreon with like what, I think it's supposed to be like maybe like a, um, like a black forest cake or something like that. Cause it's like a chocolate cake with like cherries and stuff. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But like they're. The food from, like, a distance looks, like, almost photographed. And then you have, like, the the anime characters, basically. So, like, it's just, like, a really cool contrast um, that we're probably going to hang them in the kitchen, like, above that little window thing we have. Because they're food-related, so why not? Yeah, yeah makes sense. Yeah. yeah, it's a fun show, though. I, I genuinely enjoy that one. Um, it, I, next year, they announced that they are moving to August instead of November, which is good and bad. August is very hot. So, like, walking to the fucking Javits is going to be miserable, but it's also miserable walking when it's, like, super cold out, like it was on Saturday. And yeah, Saturday wasn't super cold, but it was colder than it was the day before. Um, Friday was actually super pleasant. Um, But it also looks like they're going to get to spread out if they in August. So I'm thinking they're probably going to do a setup closer to what, like, New York Comic Con does, where, like, Artist Alley is in one section of the Javits Center... The show floor is its own thing. Maybe gaming goes into its own section. Because from what I've seen, like, they do have, like, a cool gaming section with a lot of, like, the import, like, arcade cabinets, DDR machines, rhythm games, all that sort of stuff. But it is it is kind of, like, situated in the, the back corner. Um, and a lot of people seem to flock back there. So they could probably... That is probably one of the sections that could do with just having a bigger space to, like, for people spread out and, like, properly queue for the games and everything. Mm-hmm. And then it would give them a little bit more room on the show floor to, to do stuff. But yeah, fun show. Hope to go again next year. Nice. Cool. Yeah. And then Rich, uh, which one do you want to talk about first? Scott Pilgrim or Godzilla? Let's talk about Godzilla first. <clears throat> okay. Um, so I started watching the, um, the Apple TV show Godzilla. It's, uh, Monarch, uh, Legacy of Monsters, I believe is what it's called. 
Um, it's it's so far it's good. It, it takes it takes place after the first Godzilla movie, uh, the 2014 Godzilla movie, um, and before uh, uh, King of Monsters. Um, and it if follows King, was King of Monsters before or after Kong. K- King of Monsters was Ghidorah, which was it was the second one in the series, so it was before Kong. Before, okay, Kong was before Godzilla vs Kong. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, that's the one I was yeah. asking. Yeah, yeah, it was before Godzilla. It was before Godzilla vs Kong. So it was Godzilla, then King of Monsters, and Godzilla vs Kong. Well, it was the release was Godzilla, King of Monsters, Godzilla vs Kong. The timeline is Kong Skull Island, Godzilla, King of Monsters, Godzilla vs Kong. Um, and then Godzilla vs Kong Two, I think, is what they're calling it, which doesn't make sense why they're calling it Godzilla vs Kong Two when they're not fighting this time. Um, but uh, it, it takes place after uh, Godzilla twenty fourteen. Uh, it follows a character who was in uh, uh, San, San Diego, San Francisco, whichever whichever San City in California it was um, that that he attacked. Uh, where it is about a year or two later, she's uh, going to Japan to find her to 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 settle her dad's affairs. Her dad had passed away. Um, and just, she gets caught up in all of this, uh, the strange stuff. Her dad turns out to be somebody he wasn't, or she didn't think he was, or didn't know. Uh, you find out very early on, so I'm not considering this a spoiler, even though it's kind of a shock. Uh, her dad had a second family in Japan, so it was her and her mom in the States, and then her now half-brother and his mom in Japan that were both married to, uh, to, to her dad. Uh, and, and, uh, you just, you start to uncover that, like, her grandmom was part of the original forming of Monarch and learning about all the different monsters and things like that. It's, it's a really interesting series. Um, it has, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, the, the, uh, the, the evil Captain America. U.S. Agent? Yeah, U.S. Agent. What's his, what's his name? Uh, his uh, actor's name. Oh, um, it's, uh, fucking Russell, um, Kurt Russell's kid. Yeah, Russell, Wyatt, Wyatt Russell, Wyatt Russell, Wyatt Russell, um, playing the past version of Kurt Russell's character in this show. Kurt Russell's in it, he shows up, uh, near the end of the second episode, and so it has his, he, they have his son, if Kurt Russell's son, playing young Kurt Russell. I like that, I think that's pretty cool that they did that. Um, and, and it's just all about, like, learning about the different um, kaiju or, or, or mutos, uh, in the world. It's very interesting. Uh, I, I'm, I'm interested in it. I, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely going to watch it. I, uh, I think it comes out on Wednesdays, so it's releasing weekly. Um, uh, uh, so the first two came out the first week and now you have to wait every week after that. Uh, so I don't really have much more else to say except fuck Apple TV. This is more why I want to talk about this. Apple TV is a pain in the fucking ass. Because first of all, you can't yes, get Apple is. you can't get Apple TV on an Android device. First and foremost, you cannot get Apple TV on an Android device. You cannot watch Apple TV through an Android device. Maybe you might be able to like Chromecast it if you have an Apple device that can Chromecast. But I cannot watch Apple TV on my phone, and so I can't Chromecast it onto my TV. Um, then, so in order for me to watch it, I actually have to watch it through my PS5. So in order for me to watch it on my TV at, at all, I have to plug my PS5 into my TV and not through my capture card. Because in order for it to work through the capture card, I have to turn uh, UHDC, I think is what it's called. It's a setting to where it allow you to play games on a capture card. You have to turn that off. Or you have to turn that on so, so you're not allowed to capture and you can watch stuff on Apple TV. I don't know if you need that on for all streaming services, but Apple TV, you need it on. So I need to have my PS5 hooked directly up to my TV and not connected through my capture card in order to watch this show. This is or, such a specifically you problem. It's that, funny. that's, that, I know that's a very specifically me problem, but that's not the, the biggest problem. The biggest problem is my, I, I, but the password that I had from whomever I may have gotten it from if we're password sharing or not um it wasn't working so i needed to i needed to create i needed to log in so i go to log in and um 
I go to log in, and it doesn't let you log in through the app itself. You need, and if you don't remember your password, you can't log in through the app itself. You need to log in to to Apple, like to iTunes, basically to Apple stuff, and then connect it that way. Like you can't change your password on the app. You have to change your password through the uh through through like the browser, basically. Or yeah, I mean you a- can't. You can't change your Netflix password through, like, the app on the TV or anything either. And so then, lastly, lastly, if you want to, you know, say maybe you want to sign up for the, um, uh, the, what's it called? The, the trial so that you can watch a show, um, and your, uh, account information in there is old because you have an old Apple account that you haven't used in 10 years because you had an iPod that you got or an iPad that you got in 2012 and haven't gotten a new iPad since then. Um, so all the billing information is incorrect. You can't change the billing information on the Apple TV app. You need to go to iTunes and change your billing information on iTunes. Mm-hmm. I, it's just, it's so, to me, that's ass backwards because I don't use iTunes. I like the reason I needed I needed to change my password because my account got locked because I hasn't hadn't used uh, an, an Apple device in forever, so they locked my account. So I needed to go uh, go to Apple and sign into Apple. It's just I hated it. It's such a long process. Why can't I just access Apple TV on my Android phone? Why because can't I just do that? They are direct that? competitors. Because they're fucking petty, is what it is. I don't give a shit if you're competitors. You have a, you have a, if you want me to get your, get your streaming service, then make it available for me. Otherwise, I'm not going to get your streaming service. The only reason I have, I, I would not be, I would not be watching, uh, I would not be doing anything on Apple TV if it wasn't for Godzilla, and it's not my account. It's, I'm password sharing. So, like, once Godzilla's done, I'm done. I'm getting, I'm deleting it again. I'm not watching anything else on here. I know Ted Lasso's great. I know Severance is great. But, like, I, I maybe this is, a, and, and I'm doing the boycott wrong because I'm watching, I'm watching something on there. But, like, just give it to, give it to me on, on, on Android. Who cares? Who gives a shit? I'm going to say that's probably more Google's decision than Apple's. Yeah, most no, likely. I, I doubt it. I doubt it. it, would, it would, but, what is but, Google? What would Google's reasoning be behind not letting Apple put Apple TV onto their and phones? Why wouldn't a- and but the, you can f- reverse that, that question. Why because wouldn't, why wouldn't want Apple the money want to? Through <laughs> because Google's then store. then people have to buy an Apple device in order to use it. Yeah, but they don't get yeah, as much. They don't make it's... anything off of the device. They make things off the subscription. But they, they want you to but, sp- spend on the subscription. But they want you to buy the device because then you're now pushed to do iTunes and pay for iTunes subscriptions and this and yeah, that. Yeah, nobody does that. Even people but, with iPhones don't use fucking iTunes. But that's the thing. Like they, they want people to get the i, I, I devices. They because you have to have all. I, they're they now have to have. They're now no longer allowed to have proprietary charge cables and things like that because of the UK. However. Like everything else that they have is proprietary for them. You can't just use anything. You have to use iDevices. Like th- Apple wants you to get Apple TV by getting an Apple device, so that you have to do get other Apple devices to continue to use your Apple. TV. Like I mean, it's, I, it's 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 every me, device I have except for my phone uses Apple TV. Fine. Yeah, I, I, I it, to me it's. I, what else do you use on? What what else do you watch your Apple TV on? So like like you said, my PlayStation Five. I'm pretty sure my Xbox has it. Uh, my TV has a built-in Apple TV app. My Roku has a built-in Apple TV app. Um, and obviously, like, my, my computer, like, I can always watch it from, like, the, the site itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, I just, I don't, I don't see, I don't see there being a reason to not allow Apple TV. I don't see there being a reason for It's Google the same to reason allow. that you can't do digital purchases through the Amazon store on either platform. Like, you can't buy a Kindle book on your fucking phone. You have to no. go to the... You have to go to the actual like you can't do it through the Amazon app. You have to go well, to I the mean, actual Amazon website to buy it. Well, you can't you can't buy you can't you can't get a uh, Amazon video video through Prime Video. You have to actually go to the website. Exactly, it's the same thing. And, like and get, they get put a, a lot of restrictions on this stuff. And honestly, but, it, like but with, that's with not the Apple TV. It's a hundred percent Google, uh, no, not Apple. Uh, that's that's Google's not putting a restriction. It's Amazon putting the restriction because they don't want to pay Google for using exactly for their per- yeah, uh, because Google purchase. 
put they, but they don't want to pay Google for the in-app purchase. There's a fucking in-app purchase for Apple TV. But they they would still have to because hey, you're paying a subscription. It's the same thing with like, like happened with on, the V Bucks thing. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, my Google my Google was just yelling at me for something <laughs> because, <apparently laughs> because you said Google too many times. Yeah, and it probably. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, yes, it's the V Bucks thing. But again, there's no in-app purchases on Apple TV. But there's a subscription fee. They do not want people subscribing to something on a uh, different platform. And and y- y- you know you know what you do? You say, "Hey, subscribe." You already have to subscribe elsewhere. Like you can't subscribe through any of the apps. You have to sub- like you have to put your subscription information through iTunes and whatnot. Like it, Dropout actively tells people that if you are subscribed through Android that you can actually get a cheaper subscription if you go and subscribe through their website. Right. Because they charge more through Android than they do anywhere else. They don't want they want to let people still continue to subscribe through Android if they have it. But I have to say creator Android owned. they're creator owned. Exactly. Yeah, but they're still they're giving you that offer. I'm not saying Apple has to say hey, it's cheaper here, but they can straight up say hey, because this is what Amazon does. If you want to if you want to if if you want to use the if you want to subscribe, go to the browser and, and set up the subscription. But here's your app. You got your app. Like I but like it, it, again, it goes both ways. You can't just put an app out there. The platform has to accept it. And why would Google not accept it? What is the reasoning for Google to not accept this app? There is no reason for Google to decline this because app. Com- companies are petty. Like I, they are direct competitor. I I I I think it's the other. I think it's Apple refusing i think it's apple trying to get people to buy more apple products i mean it's apple it it's literally both it's apple not wanting to pay google's servicing fee but also google not wanting to allow people to pay apple through their app like they all suck (laughs) yeah but like again it is such a specific you issue that it, it sucks even more because it's not like you don't have a common use case. Like, you can't go online and find, like, a super easy workaround that a million other people have done because, like, you have such a specific use case where, like, it was a hassle for you because of your streaming setup. It was a hassle because you don't you don't have um an Apple device. Like, everything, it was stacked against you in this in this situation. Yeah, it's, it's so, it's so frustrating. It's just so frustrating. But, like, I just hit a button on my remote and Apple TV plays. Yeah, I don't have that. I'm sure if I had a smart TV or a smarter TV, maybe. But honestly, I would probably end up having like I don't know if there's I don't I don't really know anything about TV. There so aren't I'm, as I many mean, an, there, like, there aren't as many Android TVs as there used I, to be. They're mostly Sony. I, yeah, yeah. I, are really are even the Sony TVs Android anymore? I the, like, I honestly don't know. Uh, I mean, they were five years ago, and they do have a slightly new, they have released newer versions of their TV OS. So I wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised if they did still exist. But a lot of these companies are just using their own platforms now because they don't have to pay a licensing fee. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, Rich, in, in, like, a perfect world, you also wouldn't use the same TV to play PlayStation 5 games as you do to... Sh- or, I'm sorry, you wouldn't use the same TV that you use to stream games as you use to, like, just watch TV. Like, you'd have, like, a setup in one of the other rooms in your house for streaming and, like, a setup for, like, relaxing and laying on your couch and watching shitty movies. Yeah, but also in the perfect world, that would that would also mean that I would like again, I would have a TV that has these apps in, built in. Or in, in my world, it would be the I have an Android phone with with Chromecast, and I have a PlayStation Five. I would have to hook up my PlayStation Five to my TV. It, it's just you're also one of I, the few people that actually use Chromecast. Yeah, I, I feel like Chromecast is so dead. Like, it do they probably even, like, is. Do they it release them is. anymore, or have they? I don't ju- no. I think they do. I think they do. Um, I mean, mine is only. It's the Chromecast Pro that came with the Stadia controller, so it's only what two years. I don't know how old the Pro is, but it, they were giving them they they were giving this Chromecast no, they were giving the Stadia controllers away for free or something like that. No, the whole thing was free. The whole setup was free. Yeah. Um. So the Chromecast with Google TV was um September of 2022. Um. And then the 4K edition was 2020. So it looks like every two years they release a new one. Mm-hmm. Um, or at least that's what it, it has been. So we'll see if they release another one next year. Yeah. Um, but I feel like I want to say the 4K one 
is where it stopped being directly connected to your phone. It's more like a Fire Stick or um or a Roku. Like the apps are built into the Chromecast, and it has its own remote now. Yeah, but you could, uh, but you can also still control it through your phone, and I think. Oh yeah, you can still cast to it. Like I can cast with my um Roku though too. Yeah, but like these ones, if you don't want to use your phone to manage them, you don't have to. Okay, yeah. yeah, So the the two newer ones use Android TV versus the old Chromecast hardware because it doesn't rely on the phone to be the the entry point. Mm -hmm. Though I mean, I don't, I. I wouldn't be surprised, like, I can't imagine that the, the Android TV ones have an Apple TV app either. Like, you're fucked either way for that one. <laughs> yeah. But, it's a shame. Apple TV, tons of fantastic, fantastic content. Oh, oh, I, there's so much content I want to watch on Apple TV. Like I said, like, friggin', um, Ted Lasso, Severance, Godzilla, I'm sure there's others that I just can't think of right now. The like, After there's... Party, um, uh, the, the, the big door prize, I think it was called. There was a show with Maya Rudolph that was pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there's a lot of good, like, it sucks because it's another streaming service, but like, a lot of their content is very well done in a way that like Netflix content is kind of garbage. Like, for every, for every one good Netflix show that comes out, there's like seven just utter piles of shit. Yeah. Um, I feel like Apple TV like hasn't released like a bad show. They've just released stuff that I don't care about. Yeah. But do you want to talk about the um the other thing, the Scott Pilgrim? Yeah. Scott Pilgrim takes off. It's it's Netflix. Um it is great. It's great. It's it's a very fast watch. Um I think it's like a total of like two and a half hours. It's like four Wait, wait, you said it's it's Netflix? It's Netflix series. So th so this is the one good thing that Netflix released this year? Probably. Um, I, I mean, I, I thought it was good. I thought it was fun. Um, it's, it's an animated series, uh, with the art from the actual, actually the, um, the, the video game, the Scott Pilgrim vs. World video game. And it's time for the comic too, though. Yeah. And, uh, Anna Managuchi does all of the music in it, just like they did the music for the video game as well. Um, and it, it, it's basically, it's, I don't want to spoil. I don't know if you have any plan on watching it, Cobb. Um, no, I, I think the movie's fine, but, um, I have no actual connection to the series in any way. So this is, it's, it's funny. So this is, it's great. They, they grabbed the entire cast of the movie. Everybody who was in the movie, who had a character in the movie is in the, the sh in, in, in this animated series playing their characters. Um, and the voice acting is fantastic. Like it is to me, like uh, it's actually like maybe acted a little bit like Michael Sarah as Scott Pilgrim in the animated series sounded better than Michael Sarah as Scott Pilgrim in the movie. If I that's mean, weird he, to say, he, but he's, he's also had over a decade to get better at acting. Yeah. He's grown up. He's had time to get better at acting. Um, but the, the, but the, basically the movie, the, the series starts with like the intro to Scott Pilgrim where he meets Ramona, uh, he meets Ramona and, and they go on a date and they spend the night together and then uh he invites her to uh their show but uh that's kind of where it changes uh and and Scott ends up losing the fight against Matthew Patel instead of winning and he disappears and turns into coins and um and then it's just the whole series is like is about Scott having had lost it's like an alternate universe uh but and here's where the spoilers come turns out Scott didn't actually lose uh, as you get your way through the series, uh, Scott actually, uh, future Scott kidnaps past Scott, who future Scott is played by, um, freaking last man on earth. Um, what's his oh, name? Oh, I know who you're talking about. Uh, Will something. Will, uh, uh, Will Forte. Yes. Uh, he's voiced by Will Forte. Um, because in, in the future, which is, I think like 13 years in the future, uh, Scott and Ramona got into a fight. And they, they didn't break up. She just needed space. They're married, uh, and it's been like 13 years and she needed space. They didn't break up, but Scott thought that they were broken up. And so he like leaves her and, and starts living with, uh, with, with his old roommate again. Um, and like, he like kidnaps past Scott to be like, don't date her. It'll ruin your life. Uh, and it just turns out it's, 
it turns into, like, he then goes back into the future, or back to his time. Him and Ramona continue to date, but future Scott used nanites to keep them from being able to kiss, and it turns into a fight where even more future Scott, or even more older Scott, which is ten years later, um, uh, he, he trained in all of the fighting styles of all of the evil exes, as well as Scott Pilgrim's and Ramona's. Um, and, and ends up a big full fight, uh, with them all. And it's just like, it's just a completely silly series that doesn't take itself too seriously, but it's just absolutely fun. The cast is fantastic. Often I will say that, like, you know, you got a bunch of actors doing voice acting and they, they don't often work out, but like, this cast worked. This cast absolutely worked with the characters that they were doing. Um, I, I, <laughs> having, having, uh, Lucas Lee, Having uh 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 what's his name Captain America doing Lucas Lee and and just being the complete and utter doof that he is it's just so it worked so well um and Brandon Ralph playing uh uh the vegan it just I lo- I loved it I loved every second of it it's an, it's a quick watch I it, quick it's two and a half hours but like it's only like eight episodes uh, and they're twenty minute long episodes so it's it's like it's an easy watch sit down to watch uh the first episode is hilarious. The second episode is great. My favorite part was what they do is they have one of the characters write... One of the characters had written a screenplay called Scott Pilgrim's Wonderful Little Life, which ends up being Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, the movie, uh, because... Scott was kidnapped, so future Ramona Flowers goes back to the past to write the, the how they meet, so that this way Scott and Ramona still meet and date. This um, is all just too much, <laughs> but it's it's great. It works. It works. However, so they they have they have her write it in the in the past, uh, and and a young uh young Neil is the one who quote wrote it and so he's now the uh the the head writer at the movie studio all of this still takes place in toronto they don't leave canada at all it's all toronto still um and so the director of scott pilgrim's uh silly or wonderful little life or whatever it was called uh guess guess the director's name of scott pilgrim's wonderful little life what edgar wrong okay was edgar Wright involved with the um edgar Wright? directed scott pilgrim vs. the world no i i know that but was he was he involved with this at all i i have no idea i'm not sure probably but i know i know um brian lee o'malley the the comic creator was involved with this one yeah I just brian, if, if edgar wright was uh i i'm not sure he might have maybe voiced edgar wrong um i i'm not sure if he had like anything direct in connection with the uh, animated series that's, uh, that's he, fair he, he posted about it on on twitter so he probably did. Yeah, if, if he posted about it, then he was, if not, like, directly involved, at least, like, maybe, like, executive producer level involved. Yeah. But I, I cracked up laughing when, like, so one of the episodes was a documentary about the creation of Scott Pilgrim's at a little, uh, silly little life. And, it, like, they show the, the lower third. So a word I learned today. Hey, look at you. You're like a video producer <laughs> now. And and it says Edgar wrong, and I just die laughing. I'm like, this is fantastic. That was that was the best. That was the best. Uh, uh, Edgar Wright is a executive producer on it. Okay. But uh, if, w- w- was that person that had the bottom third the announcer for the documentary? No. Because you know who voices the announcer for the document documentary? Apparently, who? Fucking Weird Al. Yes, yeah. We- it did have Weird Al was on there at one point. I just okay. wasn't, I, I, you know, I probably recognized that that was his voice, but I just didn't think it. Like, I saw the credits and it said special thanks, Weirdo, um, or special guest or something like that. Um, yeah, it's, it's such, if you were a fan of Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, it, it's great. Uh, it, I know what I explained was like, oh, this is a, this is a bit much, but like, I gave you the quick 10 minute version of it. It, it gives it to you in two hours and it's just, it's super fun and silly and ridiculous. And like, it makes sense in the end, as dumb as it is. And I just like, I was, I, I loved it. And they, they kind of left it open for another season. I hope they get it, but it's Netflix. So the, uh, you know, they'll get two more seasons in that and they won't ever finish it up after that. Yeah. At least uh, it's, it sounds like they had fun with it. Yeah. And that's really what it is. It's just, it's an absolutely fun and silly series. Good. Yeah. I, 
I don't see me ever watching it, but like, it's not because like, I think it's, I, like, I think the movie's totally fine. I just, like I said, I'm, I have no real, like, that's not a thing that I feel like I need to ever revisit. That was, mm-hmm. that was the first time I've opened up Netflix in probably about four months. We watch, uh, the, the Bake Off every Friday. The show's great. Is, is, are there new episodes of that coming yeah. out? Yeah. Oh, I guess I gotta start watching that again. Yeah, it's like series 10 or 11 or something like that. Yeah. Also, I, I totally forgot, uh, Follow the House of Usher was on Netflix, and that was very good. I don't the know new Mike, Mike, It's the new Mike Flanagan show. I don't know who that is. Uh, like, House, um, Haunting at Hill House. Um, oh, okay. Midnight Mass, like all those things. Uh, this one is, uh, it's based on, like, Edgar Allan Poe stories. And okay. Not, it's very well done. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, anything else you want to say about Scott Pilgrim, though? No. Well, then, that's probably going to be a show, I think. Yeah, that's a show. Yeah. All right. Well, in that case, uh, if you would like to find any more of our content, you can head over to www.one-quest.com. You can also help us out by supporting us at patreon.com slash onequest. If you can't support us there at your dollars, though, you can go to your favorite podcast platform, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, rate us, review us, subscribe to us. All of it helps a whole bunch. You can also find us on social media, facebook.com slash onequestonline, or at one underscore quest on Instagram and Twitter. Our YouTube channel is youtube.com slash onequestvideo, and you can always send us an email to social at one-quest.com. And Rich, what does your streaming look like? Uh, Twitch.tv slash B underscore one. It's for video game streaming Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. Uh, Baldur's Gate. Um, we were here forever and see if the Eves is really what we're playing at the moment. Uh, but we'll see what happens with Baldur's Gate. I think I technically finished act one last time I played. So maybe might take a break and play something else. Uh, might and, keep playing it. Who knows? And in 2024, we're going to have edutainment Mondays on no, his channel. <laughs> we will not. We will not. I'm going to drop enough excitement for it that you're going to have no choice. No, I, I, <laughs> I, I know. I need to. I no, just no. I have zero interest in that. It's going to be great. It's going to be. It's that. That is what's going to get you over a million subscribers. Edutainment Mondays. No, I'm good. Um, but other than that, uh, two weeks we will talk about Groundhog's Day for our next book club, and otherwise, uh, we'll be back next time with something else to talk about. Thanks for listening. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye.